It's been a long wait, but the US made Caracal Enhanced F pistol, this one with the quick sight system, is finally available in the US. Got our hands on one, and coming up, you'll see my absolute first shot through the gun. We'll do full magazine plus one, take it over to the What's for Dinner test to see what it eats, the spinner for sights and trigger control, do some practical accuracy, and then give you my concluding thoughts on a very interesting pistol. Coming up next on GB Guns. I hope everyone's having a good holidays so far. I'm here on December 26th, which means there's lots of folks out enjoying their new Christmas toys. So pardon the background noise of shooting. I know it's annoying for the audio quality in the video, but keep in mind those folks are celebrating their freedoms. We're back about 20 yards from our C-Zone target. I'm sorry, in these temperatures and this moisture, spray paint doesn't work too well. So gonna have to run with uh, just a dirty target for a while. Starting off with my first shots, 10 rounds. I'm using Fioki 9AP. Bear in mind that is rather soft or weak ammunition. So if we have issues, I will swap to something hotter, but this is what I have the most of right now. See how that quick set system works? Oh, that's easy. Yep. And then I miss. hold a little bit higher. Did not get slide lock. That may be that my thumb lines up perfectly with the slide lock. An unfortunate coincidence. We'll have to watch for that on the video. Uh, the texture on this is not very aggressive. It's not really holding onto my hand very well. However, the ergonomics are compensating for that, and the recoil impulse is pretty nice as well. The trigger is a longer stroke than what I'm accustomed to, but not a bad trigger, and it feels a bit smoother than uh, it did in the tabletop. I don't know if just a couple dry fires or breaking things in. We'll have to see. Next is full mag plus one. And I do want to note, I am using the uh, magazines meant for states outside of the constitutional united states somehow i ended up with these pinned 10 rounders i went to uh, order some of the 18 rounders only two places had them one of them wouldn't ship to oregon and the other one wanted 35 dollars for shipping so i think i will uh, do a little liberation of these magazines with the drill press after this review is conducted but i wanted to show you first how they come it's actually my first time using um, unconstitutional mags or anti-constitutional mags, whatever. I know it's not the manufacturer's fault, but the laws that require it are definitely unconstitutional. The, uh, the 10th round went in firmly, but not impossibly. It was a different sensation than when you fully stuff a magazine and the spring is bottoming out. That has kind of like a, uh, the resistance increases and you can feel it doesn't want it, but there's still some movement. Whereas with these pin mags, I just hit a wall. Like it, it just was not gonna go past that. But hopefully nothing a drill press can't fix. Full magazine plus, plus one, it doesn't help those of you living in free states, but those living in restricted states, is this any good? I'm also gonna try to pick up the pace on that steel at distance and we'll see how the gun runs. Fully stuffed with soft ammo and compromised magazines. wasn't going too fast there. I'm still trying to get good on these sights. The sights are intended to be a defensive distance, real quick, whip it up and get you there. And they certainly do get you on target quickly, but it's very easy with a sight radius that short to be off at a distance like 20 plus yards, especially on a reduced size torso. If you think those sights are crazy, don't worry. These are also available with conventional sights. I just enjoy things that are different. And so I wanted to try it out. Now let's see what the gun eats. Thanks to our Ammo Squared and patron supporters, it's what's for dinner time. Today's mix is a little, I guess you could say more boring or less exciting, 90 grain through 147 grain. But as I go by these, you'll notice that the overall length, the ogive location, case material, projectile type, all of that is different. That's because we're looking to see what the gun eats. Will it feed from slide lock? Is there enough energy to properly cycle and feed another round of the same type? That's a 140 grain, the box is backwards. <laughs> and, uh, 
then uh, will we get slide lock when empty? This is a test of ammo and gun compatibility. It's not a pass fail for either the ammo or the gun. If you'd like to try any of this stuff, check out the pinned comment over at gbgunsdepot.com. I link to the stuff where I can find it. Our target for what's for dinner, as many of you know, is a group of two inch circles, seven yards away. Not exactly the finest target, but a general place to aim. And it might make for an interesting experiment with these. Those of you who have been with the channel a while know how I typically shoot. This might give us some judgment. First load is the 1776 uh, lead-free 90 grain. Interesting looking stuff. Circle one. Yeah, those sights line up real fast. You could almost say they're quick sights. I was aimed dead center there and hit quite a bit left. Did not get slide lock. I don't think it's my thumb, but time will tell. Those have a kind of a burning smell to them, almost like uh, the start of an electrical fire. You guys ever had the nightmare of smelling that? That's a bit what that stuff smelled like. Our next load is Horny Critical Defense Light 100 grain, little tiny bullets. Look more like a 380 round than a 9mm. Circle 2. Be real careful to make sure I am as dead center as I can be on this. Not bad. Didn't have side lock issue. I'm checking to see if this site they hopefully the camera will pick this up they did uh, pin the site which is nice I've never seen that before uh, you know a little um, how would you call it like you do on a castle on the AR um, but it appears to be slightly off center and I'm hitting slightly left maybe that's the influence of these limited capacity magazines that the guns now slightly left that's humor <laughs> next up the s and non-tox 100 grain. I'm really curious if any of you guys know about these, because that sure looks like lead, but they're called non-tox. However, it's not non-toxic. So maybe that's the difference. Circle three. Still left. No cycling issues. Next, some Federal HST. Oh, nope, I'm skipping ahead of myself. Circle four will be, be uh, Blazer Aluminum. We use aluminum and steel cased ammunition for the same reason you guys do, it's cheaper. The problem with it is it has greater friction between the cases stacked in the magazine, greater friction going into and out of the chamber, and it expands and contracts at a different rate than brass does. So some guns choke on it. That's why we like to include it just to see. Yeah, that's way low and left. But the gun is running. Might have to make some adjustments to these sights. Now onto those Federal HST 124 grains, nickel plated. Nickel plating, if you weren't aware, reduces the friction. It also is corrosion resistance for say carry ammo, which is what this stuff is. Spicier for sure. But this gun is really comfortable to hold. That smells a little bit like a pear. Um, great ergonomics to this. Uh, the, the shape just has a very natural feel in the hand. So I commend them for that. The sight being slightly left that's something I can remedy at home, but uh, so far so good. And the trigger in the tabletop video, I described as being kind of more duty oriented in weight. I'm not feeling that now. Now it, it, it's running like a nice trigger. It just has a slightly longer stroke and nothing wrong with that. Some of us need a longer stroke. Hey, 
Circle 6 is going to be the uh, Federal Syntec 138 grain jacket and hollow point. These are the blue ones that break apart into uh, three pedals and a core. They can be punchy, tend to smell like cinnamon. Excellent accuracy with this pistol and that ammunition. And although those were punchier, I could feel the effort for more recoil. Um, the shape of it, I want to say it has something to do with the way it's letting my fingers help with recoil. You see there's a, almost a bit of a recurve here, but not the toe kick. So a lot of guns have a little toe kick that pops out. And that traps the pinky and lets you pinky it. But this curve is sort of giving more control down here. And that's really holding on to the gun in recoil. Now we have SMB 140 grain subsonic. Lightweight for subsonic, which means they're definitely using less powder. Should be a soft load. Definitely shot softly. I think those random off shots for me. <laughs> Having two together and one apart for all of these different loads. Uh, keep in mind that just like rifles, how much of the projectile is engaging the rifling and at what point in its leap from the casing it does that, all that does impact accuracy on handguns. So each of these different bullet weights are engaging the rifling differently depending on the length of the bullet and where the ogive begins. The ogive being the point at which it's at full diameter. Circle 8 is the Federal Match 147 grain. These are the purple ones. Syntec, they are supposed to match the 147 HSTs. They, in my experience, tend to be a little bit heavier recoil than the 147 HSTs. Yeah, you can, I'm sure you can see the gun is really kicking. But it's not uncomfortable at all. I'm not getting any jarring. I think that maybe the as described reduced radius in the tang back here is it's not banging on my thumb knuckle. I don't know if you guys have ever had that problem. Let me know in the comments if you had. But uh, man, some pistols just rock back on that thumb knuckle and beat it to hell and it can be really uncomfortable and that's obviously not happening here for me and uh, I wear double XL gloves I've got pretty large hands. Circle 9 are the 147 grain HSTs, the actual HSTs. That was smooth. Yeah I'm learning this trigger. So the group was a little bit looser but still decent and fairly quick. That's because I am now just pulling right through instead of staging at the wall. We'll try that one more time with the 147 grain uh, Lawman. Yep, I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> I think I figured out this gun. Which is great because next we have sights and trigger control over at the spinner, which will be really interesting with this quick sight system. We are 12 yards back from our six inch Titan Great Outdoors spinner target. Use this for sights and trigger control because it's a small target at distance. And as I hit it, it starts moving. The more I hit it and the better it's hit, the more important and more difficult time and well play shot is if I want to keep it moving in the same direction. It has been improved. My dad recently helped me with some hose clamps and some dents on those legs. Let's see how it does. This ammunition, the Fioki 9AP, is a little bit soft. However, we got a four inch barrel, so we should be getting a full burn. See how it does, and if this sight's gonna cause me problems on this small target at distance. Interesting. That was arguably my worst performance on the spinner ever. <laughs> I 
it sounded to me like it was hitting because of the weather and my inability to paint this i couldn't tell if my hits were high or low on the thing um, i'll have to go back and watch the footage you guys have already seen it so maybe you'll be able to tell but as far as the purpose of running this gun sights and trigger control very very easy to use the sight system it is definitely quick and gets you on there i think our slight left error that we were seeing on paper might have been what caused problems here i don't know i haven't seen the footage yet the trigger it's easy to know when it's going to break it is a predictable trigger the stroke is long and as a result timing shots on there took a little bit longer or felt a little bit slower than what i'm used to i'm tempted to give it one more try just because this is such a different gun and we're learning a lot of things at once here. So I'm gonna do one more run on the spinner. Take two on the spinner for fairness and science. Eight more rounds of Fioki 9 AP. I have no idea what's going on. Yes, modified the spinner, but only to keep it together more. Nothing was done to the bearings, nothing that should be impacting the way it performs. I haven't seen the footage yet to see where my hits were, but it seemed like I was hitting, just not getting much energy. Fioki 9AP is soft, I don't know, but as I said in the first one, Lining up these sights was quick and easy, and the trigger is predictable. It's just a longer stroke, so timing like that was a little bit more work. Let's do some practical accuracy. Practical accuracy is shooting a group for your visual entertainment. It's also where I really focus in on and try to wrap up my thoughts on the gun. That's really the main purpose of this. We are seven yards away from a one inch square. That one inch square tends to be about the same width as a front sight post when viewed from seven yards, which makes it great for finding the same place to hold. I'm going to go for the right circle square this time, since we seem to be airing left with these sights. See what happens. Fioki 9AP, just basic cheap ball ammo. Interesting, not, not my best. After six years of waiting for this, what do I think? <laughs> the ergonomics are outstanding. The trigger is indeed getting better with each shot. It's getting smoother and smoother and I'm learning it. It's a bit of a longer stroke, but that longer stroke also functions as somewhat of a safety should you need to cancel a shot mid shot or for those of you, and I know this is a growing trend, who are trigger strokers rather than preppers, um, just coming straight through continuously, this is a great trigger for you. For staging, coming to the wall and then breaking, it also works, it's just that pre-stage is long. The accuracy issues that I seem to be having could be explained by this quick sight system. So, that's maybe my own doing because I asked for the system. I think it's interesting concept. Would I say the gun is inaccurate? Heck no. That was a one inch square. I was shooting at two inch circles, a six inch circle from 12 yards and a C zone target from 20 yards. Shooting at a torso to defend yourself to stop an attacker. This sight system is faster in my opinion than regular sights. It gets lined up quickly and it's easier on the eyes because rather than have focal plane, focal plane, and then target focal plane, these are close, to enough, close enough together that depending on your eyesight, and I don't have perfect eyesight anymore, but these appeared almost practically together. If there's any detriment to that, it might be that you find yourself more tempted to focus on the rear sight than the front. I don't know. I would need to spend more time with this thing to really master those sights, or, just get the setup that has 
regular traditional sights and keep at it that way. Those are available as well. Ergonomically, this thing was very comfortable. The um, traction is not great on the frame. It wasn't squirting out of my hand or anything, but it's 40 degrees and moderate humidity. It's turned out to be a beautiful day, so I'm really grateful for that. But you can always stipple or add goon tape or do whatever you want to enhance grip. So starting conservative is better than it being too aggressive. If you guys want to argue counter to that, look at what Smith & Wesson had to do. They enhanced their traction so much, everyone complained, and then they had to tone it down because nobody wanted their aggressive stuff. So this functions. If you want more, make it more. But the overall shape, this, this curve, and the width combined with that tang in there makes this really comfortable to shoot. This is something I'd have no problem spending a full day shooting. Very comfortable gun, very interesting gun, and uh, I'm stoked to have another of the Boobitz actions out there. You can see how short that slide is. That's not crazy trick of slide in frame CZ visual effect. That's, that's how, how small this thing is. Uh, it's a really nice shooter. I'd recommend trying one if you can. If you can't find one to try before buying, unless you're very adventurous, you may want to go with just the traditional sight setup. I only say that because this was not my first time shooting a sight setup like this. Granted, it had been six years, but in those six years, I've also gained a lot of skill as a shooter, and I still had trouble compensating for this. I'm sure someone's going to uh, make a fool out of me and show me how they are masters at it. That's great for you. That's cool. Uh, I respect that. But for me in this session, I was not able to master it yet. I think it's something that it's going to require a little bit more time. Don't worry. When that does happen, I'll have a video for you. Thanks for watching.